So today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate a space scene just like this one that you're seeing right here. I'm going to show you how it can be done in less than two minutes with just a few clicks. It's literally that easy. The program we're going to be using is J Wildfire. And if you haven't heard of J Wildfire, it's a severely underrated program in my opinion. It's basically a fractal flame generator, a form of really complex geometry that is generated for use of clever formulas that I don't really understand myself. But you see a lot of these patterns in nature and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just very beautiful and infinitely complex. And what we have in this program is essentially that in 3D form. Now, J Wildfire is a free program actually, it's open source, but uh, I encourage you guys to get it on Steam because I think it's only like a tenor or something and just gives you, it gives you a way of supporting the developer and I think it's worth the money to be honest. So once you've got the program open, all you need to do is not worry about any of this. What you see here is your viewport. So this is what you, you're going to be seeing in the render. Go over here to scripts, go to built-in scripts and if you scroll down, what you got here See these ones that say galaxies? Well, these are basically scripts that you can run that will automatically generate particular types of um, fractal flames. And some really clever people have, have already designed these for us. And all you need to do is just click run. And if you don't like the first one, so the first one looks good, but if you don't like it, just hit run again. Just keep hitting run until you find one that you like. And you can try all sorts of these. So we can hit run on this one or this one. There's loads of different options, but I'm gonna go with one of these. So I like this one. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> You've got your space scene. See how easy that was, right? So yeah, let's do a quick animation of this. So so we'll go over here. Over here are your transforms. So next to scripts are your transforms. So these are control points within the scene that you can move to sort of change the way it looks. So here you'll see it starts making these lights orbit. Every generation is gonna be different. Some of these may do different things. Um, so if you follow me, it may not look exactly the same, but you, you kind of get the point. So I'm just gonna do a quick animation. We're gonna do a 100 frame animation. So over here is the frame count over here. And this is your animation timeline. If you can't see that, just click on this thing here. That will hide that and, and show it again. We'll get one of these things just to move slightly, just to give it a bit of movement on the first frame. Click on one of these control points, one that you, you, you see is making noticeable movement. Click on one of these and we're going to add keyframes on all of these. So these are the transform uh, settings. So you want to add a keyframe for each transform. So apply and close, just add one for each one, making sure you're on the first frame. And once you've done all that, go to the last frame. So where it says play here, click on this fit next to it. That's going to take you to the last frame of the scene. In our case, it's 100. And just gonna bring this one in a little bit, just like that. I find with this program, it's best not to go too complicated with the animation, just because I don't think the keyframe edit editing is very intuitive. I haven't found a good way to edit all the keyframes. So I find if you make it too complex, it just might end up looking crap. So I would just do something simple. So now when we hit play, you got all of these sort of bits moving around, which I think looks cool. So. Next step, we're going to go back to the first frame and let's just do a simple zoom. So we're going to click on the zoom here, click on that, add a keyframe, apply motion curve, go to the last frame and we're just going to zoom in a bit like that. Nothing too crazy, just like that. So once you've added your first keyframe of a transform property, it's worth noting when you're on a different frame, all you have to do is just move the parameter and the keyframe will be added for you. So you don't have to click apply again. And that's just sort of how it works, kind of like After Effects. And we'll hit play. And there we go. That's our simple space animation. You're noticing it's very pixelated here. If you want to just see what it's going to look like uh, when you render it, just click on this button here. That's going to render the viewport. Now we can see that's sort of how our scene's going to look. So once you've rendered one frame, we can actually go over here to coloring. And here you've got some color correction tools. So I like to drop the gamma a bit for the space ones. Maybe drop that brightness a bit as well. And I would drop the low brightness as well. So we get sort of deeper blacks. And yeah, I think that looks good. So we'll hit play. And yeah, that's our scene. Yeah, so let's render this out now. So I think the best way to render in this program is to use the batch renderer. Uh, you can just render by clicking here, but I think the batch render is probably the best way. Okay, so now that we've got our, our scene here, we, we should probably want to save it. So in J Wildfire, 
you don't save like you normally would. You don't save here. Uh, you actually need to save here. So you, what you do is save flame. Just find a place to save the flame. The flame is essentially the project file. So, so this thing here is your flame and you want to save obviously all of, all of this. So just save it somewhere you can find it. I recommend saving it one of your root directories just because this isn't the best folder to navigate through. So I would go like one of your drives and then make like a J wildfire folder mm. and like make a flames folder for them. So we'll call that JW0003 um, galaxy scene. So we've saved that. Yeah. So how do we render it out? How do we render the animation? So one thing to know, there's two different ways to render your scenes. You can render with your CPU or your GPU. GPU gives you faster results. However, there's some limitations with GPU rendering on this program. So some scenes, number one, just don't allow it. And other scenes may, the coloring may look a bit different. Some some sort of, some parts of the flames may not render the same as they do. To check if you can render on your GPU, ideally you'd want to render on your GPU because it's a lot quicker. To check if you can, you can select this thing here and then we'll do this. See this thing's gone green. That We'll try render that again and you can see I actually can't render this one on a GPU and you'll find that with all of these space scripts that none of them can be rendered on a GPU. So you have to use the CPU to render these ones, which means it's going to take a bit longer. But yeah, that's sort of the trade off that you that you have to take depending on your on your specs. It shouldn't it shouldn't really take too long and also depending on the resolution. So how do we render this then? So obviously first thing to do is to save your flame. So make sure you've done that first because we're going to use the batch renderer to render the animation and you need to save the flame before you do that. So save that once you've got your animation, go to windows, go to batch renderer. On over here, you want to go add files and you just want to find the uh, J wild flame that you just made. So we have this one, open that and go to render animation here this little column, you need to set that to one. If you don't set that to one, it's only going to render a still frame. It's not going to render the animation. So set that to one. Over here, you can change your output resolution. I'm going to go for 2K, so uh, 1440p. But obviously, you can do any of these if you want. Obviously, the higher resolution, the longer it's going to take to render. So it's just one thing to notice. And with the batch renderer, uh, it's going to have GPU automatically selected because we've got, because of this particular scene can't be rendered on GPU. You'll need to uncheck that. Uh, so for the space scenes, you're probably going to need to disable the GPU. And also I would click this as well because you want it to do the denoising. Um, I don't know why that would be selected. So yeah. And now just hit render and it should go through and render all of the uh, frames. So we just hit render now. And it's worth noting that we didn't set a destination folder for the render to come out. The way this batch renderer works is it renders the frames in the same place that it renders the frames in the same destination that your flame is saved in. So you just need to check where your flame file is and it should be rendering there. Now this may take a while as we're using the CPU for rendering. So you'll just have to wait, but you can see it's going. We've got one thing here when the job's done. It's going to automatically convert it to MP4, which is cool. But if you want to keep the image sequences, you have to keep an eye on this and just hit stop when you get to about 90%, which is when it starts to encode it into MP4. Because the way it works, it basically renders out image sequences, then it converts it to MP4 at the end of the process. And then finally, it will delete all of the images from the original render. So if you want to stop that encoding process, you just hit stop when you get to about 90%. Or just keep an eye on this folder and wait till you get to your final frame, which in our case is 100. So once that says 100, we can stop the batch. So yeah, there you go. Space scene literally created in two minutes. Rendering obviously takes a bit longer, but um, yeah. Like I said, I, I do think this program is severely underrated. So I encourage you guys to check it out and maybe purchase it on Steam if you want to support the developers. If not, it is free as well. You can just from their official website. I think it was only like a tenner. I can't remember. I think I'll leave it there. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you feel like you gain value from this, consider supporting me on Patreon or just give me a like and subscribe. Uh, that always goes a long way as well. And if you want to check out more of my work, you can find that at nebmotion.co.uk.